Hello everybody, my name is Vetching Raptor and I welcome you to a new World of Tanks preview video. And today we'll have a look at all the information we've got from Wargaming Fest. And we will start with dissecting first the summary video. Because there are quite some interesting things in it which I want to talk about. I am um, obviously going to put out the sound because I, I mainly want to talk about the pictures which we are going to see. And first of all, those are the two lines which are one of the um, two of the three lines which are going to be changed. And as you can see, we are going to lose the SU-122-54. The SU-10, um, it looks like. Uh, there you can see it. The SU-101 will stay at tier 8. The SU-100M1 will stay at tier 7. And Object 263 will be tier 9. And lastly, on the top, we'll have the Object 268 version 4. I am going to leave a link in the description below to the stats of this particular vehicle where I'm going to compare those with you. And I personally dislike this change a lot. Second up, they are going to change the Russian tank, um, medium tank line. The H object 430 will go down from tier 10 to tier 9. And oops, this was already a little bit too fast. And we'll get the object 430U, basically a Russian 121 with just a lot better armor. Sadly for us, we do not know yet what is going to happen to the object for to 416, the pancake. It will probably reappear again. They do not know yet what they want to do. And as you can see, we are also going to lose the object 430 version 2 as a tank in this particular tank line as the rear turreted medium tanks. And lastly, we will get a new heavy line. The, from KV-13, which it looks like will be reclassified as a tier 7 heavy tank, to the ISM, to the Object 705 and the Object 705A. The, again, if you want to look into the stats of those vehicles, I let you a link in the description below to those two, two vehicles, to the ISM and the Object 705A. To, uh, to the Object 705, I did not yet release a video. So yeah, there's that. Next up, I think, yes, it's just about HD maps, which are coming in March. So this is, you can watch it for yourself. It looks quite good. They also talk a little bit about the Encore. I also made a short video about that. And this is where it comes to be interesting. Apparently, this tank here is an Italian tank, meaning we, and they're talking that we're getting two new um, tank trees into the game. One of which being the Polish tank tree and another one being the Italian one. And why is it Italian? Because of those blueprints. Obviously, let's be honest, if you look closely right now, you can see Fiat Ansalado and Fiat is an Italian company. So it will be interesting to see what new mechanic the, the Italian tanks will bring. There are ideas of a uh, Italian tier 10 Leopard with a free shot auto loader. And lastly, we'll get more um, customization. And that looks like a really, really awkward IS-4. Hence, there will also be changes to the IS-4, apparently. And there will be some new more game modes. <coughs> one of which being Halloween mode, another one being a new football mode. That's it, what we can dissect from the Wargaming Fest video. Now we have five different posts about different stuff, so we're going through all of them. We start with, let's start in the beginning. And so here we go, there are some, this is not really important, this is more for people which are playing World of Warships, you will get some little um, prizes if you didn't play it for long, apparently. Then, this is an interesting idea, they want, they're thinking about offering special vehicles like the Fosh 155 and the Death Star for Bonds. Honestly, I don't think it's a too bad of an idea because some people really miss those vehicles and those are not completely OP vehicles, which you have to say, no, we could never show them again. And this is the same with the next question, which are there are no plans of changing the T-22 medium. And um, well, yeah, the T-22 is the only tier 10 reward tank which I'm missing in my garage, which is a little bit hype and well, a little bit sad. Next question is, there are no plans or no, next information is, there are no plans on rebalancing the Japanese heavy tanks, which is a little bit annoying in my personal opinion. The next patch will be announced tonight at the stage and we will see this obviously later and it will be released in February and will bring a lot of changes to the Soviet tanks. And in cursive we are saying let's let the ST2 hype again. Uh, begin, excuse me. And yes, World of Tanks 1.0 will come out in March, meaning we have in February, February, 
the changes to the Russian heavy tank line, the changes to the Russian tanks in general. And in March, we'll have a separate update, meaning 1.0, with all the HD maps. To those, we come later. Apparently, I, right now they say there will be 30 HD maps at the time of release. And later on, they say something about one, two, one, one, two three, four, five, six, seven. Apparently, no, there are a little bit more. I'm not entirely sure. I think they said something about 25 ones. Now it's 30. Not really that sure about that one. And we announced the Anchor map app. We already talked about this. Again, those are the older news. And um, no need to worry about HD maps. Everyone can play now. We'll be able to play after the update. So I... Um, when I was on the sandbox server, when it was still in a quotation mark, early stake quotation mark end, those maps felt wonderful and really fluent. I did not have a single problem in frame drops. I even had more FPS when I was recording those videos. And the test of the HD beta of 1.0 will last one month, obviously to find all the climbing spots, all the different problems, because, well, yeah. And apparently World of Warship splits is announced on the EU region, a uh, Ru Russian region, that, well, apparently it was not available on, uh, only on EU. That's interesting. Next, what were our gaming fest info number two? Next December will be 10 years since we had the idea of World of Tanks. We plan to give something special to old players and beta alpha testers. And this will not be a garage slot, meaning this will be actually something interesting. We do not know yet what it could be. We can be free to speculate anything. I'm sadly not a beta tester nor an alpha tester, but I played the game since 2011, as far as I remember correctly. Another interesting news piece is we are working on a new system for crews, meaning, yes, they want to get rid of 50% crews. That's actually interesting because World of Warships has an interesting crew um, system, in my opinion, but I do hope they are finally going to re overhaul the whole crew system because at the moment, it's outdated. There are many crew skills which are essential and the other ones which are not good at all. There are also old ideas of making your radio operator having its base skill being sixth sense so you know when you are spotted, like in World of Warships. There are, you are always knowing if you're spotted or not, even though you do not have any skill to get that. Next up, we have that we should not wait for multi turtle tanks next year. The future is, feature is really interesting and cool, but very difficult. And well, I do have to say, in the Halloween mode, it was actually quite interesting, but there were a lot of problems and some things which are really awkward to handle with. But it looks like Wargaming, it was a proof of concept. We are most likely going to see wheeled vehicles sooner or later. Maybe this will be the new mechanic of the Italian tree. Or maybe this will be with the introduction of an Italian tree, we will see f wheeled vehicles. And the proof of concept for wheeled vehicles was during, as you probably know, during the piece of um, the 100 years of tank history. And there's actually something interesting, I think, about a set. Yes, I don't know what is a gaming set. You are able to get a mon month rental of the Defender, some stuffs and so on and you can buy the defender later on apparently but that's not important for us this is another important little thing about though we are working on personal missions 2.0 one of the most important things in 2018 previous missions will remain though so we are free to speculate which tank could come and which tank could be personal mission reward tanks is it maybe the chieftain who knows i'm going to make a separate video about all of those things, what could come, what could be. Next up, Polish tanks will be released in 2018. We do not know anything about Polish tanks at the moment. We do know we have the Poodle, which is our crew trainer at the moment. Most likely it will be a medium tank line. But yeah, they will be released as one of the two new modes, uh, two new tech trees in World of Tanks. And this is also an interesting idea. We once we are done with HD maps, we can experiment with bigger maps for 15 versus 15 battles. But the main problem that we can predict games of hide and seek, which is totally understandable. But hey, at least they're working on something. In 2018, there will be five new maps. So this is how they get to the total of 30 maps. Um, there are already some maps leaked. I'll try to make a video sooner or later about them. But at the moment, we have a lot of things and Christmas is right around the corner. So I try my best. Then return of old maps is possible, but we have to turn existing ones to HD first. So 
Holy, holy serp. Actually, I'm pretty darn happy about that statement because the old maps which were simply amazing. And I know some were super stupid and such. And uh, rich. Oh, yeah, I need to remember what. There we go. Dragon Rich was such an amazing map, let's be honest. It was so funny and it was simply fun to play. I know it was a huge camp fest and if you did not have any gun impression, it was so obnoxious to play. But this was back in the days where I played a T28. This was back in a T28 prototype. This was back in the days where I played the Black Prince. Ah, uh, good old memories. Seriously, good old memories. Another one would be Hidden... Hidden Village is also one of the old maps which theor excuse me, theoretically would get a rework in HD and was also quite fun in my opinion that I had an amazing game with an ELC where I outplayed a T-34 tier 8 heavy tank of the American Tech League line so amazingly well because simply few range. And a lot, um, there are two more. Um, coast... Let's see if it gives me the right one. There we go. Instantly we get the right one. Coast. My D map, which I had the highest amount of damage in it. In my Chuck Pansu 100. Good old times. And lastly, um, hit, we got Hidden Village. We got Dragon Ridge. We got Coast. Um, Port World of Tanks. This is also one of the old maps. Um, was also quite interesting, but they removed it with the introduction of destructible... Um, um, walls where you could shoot through walls and do not lose your shell. Back in the days in World of Tanks, if you shoot through a wall, you would lose your shell. It would simply disappear. It would the wall would eat your shell, like right now how it is with the buildings. But now you just shoot through the wall and lose some of your penetration, 25 millimeters to be precise. I know there's one more map, but I simply do not remember that name. Well then. Let's have a look at the next pieces of information. Wargaming KV will be KV5 will be experimented on during the first quarter of next year. Thank goodness they're finally going to change something about the KV5, which is in a horrible state. And honestly, Wargaming should, or, or rather, the developer of World of Tanks should certainly go to World of Warships and say, "Hey guys." Could you probably give us the idea of um, how you did this with the Graf Zeppelin? Oh yeah, sure. Graf Zeppelin was a huge failure of us and we started to work with community. We gave away different Graf Zeppelin uh, carrier vessels to the people to test for. So yeah, they gave away, for re certain periods of time, they gave away this specific um, carrier vessel, the CV. The, um, the Graf Zeppelin. They gave it away for the people which brought the Graf Zeppelin to test the new Graf Zeppelin, meaning give it a new loadout, give it different armaments and so on. And I think this should be a great idea for World of Tanks as well. If they would start doing something like this, work actively with the live player base, not with the test server player base, not with the super test player base. If I want my Object 263 to be changed, then please ask me and not do something random Shenanigans, which I'm certainly not happy about. Another thing is, we are currently we are working on a lawyer scheme of returning sold premium tanks, and um, because it has been, it can be done simpler. So the customer support isn't flooded with messages. I think it means that if you sold your premium tank by accident or something like this, you will actually get it e back easier. I'm not entirely sure though what this statement means. Next up, War Gaming Fest in Info Numero Furo. Um, that is not important because I don't, I personally don't care about that. Then the changes to the Soviet Tech Tree in patch 9.22. And those, <coughs> excuse me, those are the pictures we already looked at. And, oops, what does that? As you can see, here's in Russian. We will start from the KV-13 again. We t already talked about this. And apparently there will be, there are also idea of introducing a new tier 10 medium tank, which, which is rear turreted. We do not know yet anything about that, okay? I can't tell you right now what there will be. Then the Object 257 will be replaced with the T10 into the leading to IS-7. I already made a video about it, again, link in the description below. 
The T10 will remain as a tier 9 tank and will lead to another tier 10 vehicle. My guess is the Object 77 more in a specific video. And here we have it, new Object 705 line will branch off from KV-13. No other tanks will lead to the ISM and people are already not happy about it. But I will be unhappy if you're going to change that. I just brought the KV-13 Wargaming. And here we have it, Object 413 line, we don't know yet what is going on there. I think they haven't made up their mind yet. So, next up, ranked battles for the people which really want to gain them chevrons and stuff like, well, bonds. And this is quite interesting. They're going to change it. New season will be in the first half of 2018. And they have listened to the players and made changes, blah, 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 PR talk. There are in a uh, uh, new, new ranks, blah, blah, blah. Chevron system will be reworking. This is interesting. The winning team, the top three, get two chevrons. The following seven get one chevron. And the last five will get none. And the losing team, the top one, get one chevron. The next four don't get anything. And the bottom ten lose one chevron. That's actually a pretty good system, in my personal opinion. But I have to say, I do not play a lot of ranked battles. Then, in 2018, they will actively develop bonds, accept events, personal missions, and they're even considered offering special reward tanks for bonds. Again, the idea will most likely be the Fosh 155 and the Death Star and not Climb Wars specific reward tanks, because that would be a little bit mean, I think. Stun is forever. Gosh darn it. Um, there will be no possibility to rent your tank to a clanmate. Okay, fair enough. You can expect some new mechanics for tanks in the next year. And what we can think about that is IS-7, Rammer, autoloader with free shells and a new mechanic for tier 10s like siege mode. We are looking into it and experimenting. Such mechanics are very difficult because we need to try and make it historically accurate. And honestly, guys, this with this auto loader for the IS-7, this is actually historical. The IS-7 had, I think, a, um, a round per minute of 10 shots. I think I've once read that on the Wikipedia page. Um, let's have a quick look. This is the German page. Maybe it's in the English one. Uh, is there no English site? Hmm. Up, 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 up. No, there's nothing standing about um, shot frequency or how fast it was able to shoot. Well, let's have a look. I have seven English Wikipedia. Up, I made a little mistake there. There, let's have a look here. Um, the IS-7. I, I know there was something about it having an autoloader. Yeah. The loader noted that the I-7 was comfortable and that the auto loader was easy to use, meaning they had a high rate of fire, which is actually quite interesting. So they're probably going to introduce something like this. Next up, E25 is truly overpowered. Why do you sell it then? Linux system, there are very few people which are using it, so this will be coming. T22, nothing is planned. It was our mistake and will remain for collection only. But I want that tank. Hello Wargaming, give it for me for bonds. Maybe, maybe not, who knows. And lastly, the last piece of information. Frontline will come in back in 2018. So what is Frontline? Frontline, do you know Battlefield Rush mode? Basically, there you need to destroy two bases before you can advance an next piece and then do the same again, like three to four times. This is what Frontline was. With respawnable tanks, you were able to pick from three different tanks you were able to choose in the beginning before you go into the game. And then you have to capture different points as the attacking team. And as defender, obviously you need to defend those. And there were like three stages as far as I remember. I think even the first map was something like D-Day. It is an interesting mode and it's a lot better than Grand Battles, in my opinion. Next up, there will be two new fan modes in 2018. One for football championship and one for Halloween. Okay. And in 2018, there will be two European nations added. Second nation will have a completely new mechanic. And they are known Itali Italy and Poland. And again, my biggest guess is Italy will be the second nation because we already have a premium Poland tank. So they will probably introduce first the Polish line. With the Polish line introduce an Italian premium tank and then we'll see how it goes. And currently we are working on 3D customization, but it's early to say anything. 
we saw already sec um, two decustomization in the video shortly. And I do not know why exactly they are including this picture because this is the Fury, the tank which um, is already in the game. And I checked it with my Fury in the garage and there is nothing changed at all of those pictures. Probably they just use it to explain stuff. And lastly, those are all the maps which are going to be released in March 2018. And we already had a look at some of those maps like Abbey, Mines, Cliff, Muro, Mali, Brocco, Steps, Sand River, Himmelsdorf. No, no. Ensk, no. Lyofox, yes. And uh, no, I think. El Haluf, yes, no, yes. Can't remember. Ah, uh, Redshire we had, not Live Oaks. Yes, there are a lot of maps and yeah. Guys, I thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Tomorrow is finally the 24th of December. Have a great time with your families and I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.